The Stand by Stephen King Sally, a mutter. Wake up now, Sally. A louder mutter. Leave me alone. He shook her harder. Wake up, you gotta wake up. Charlie, Charlie's voice, calling her. For how long? Sally swam up out of sleep. First she glanced at the clock on the night table and saw it was quarter past two in the morning. Charlie shouldn't even be here. He should be on shift. Then she got her first good look at him and something leaped up inside her, some deadly intuition. Her husband was deathly pale. His eyes started and bulged from their sockets. The car keys were in one hand. He was still using the other to shake her, although her eyes were open. It was as if he hadn't been able to register the fact that she was awake. Charlie, what is it? What's wrong? He didn't seem to know what to say. His Adam's apple bobbed futilely, but there was no sound in the small service bungalow but the ticking of the clock. Is it a fire? she asked stupidly. It was the only thing she could think of which might have put him in such a state. She knew his parents had perished in a house fire. In a way, he said, in a way it's worse. You gotta get dressed, honey, get baby Levon. We gotta get out of here. Why? she asked, getting out of bed. Dark fear had seized her. Nothing seemed right. This was like a dream. Where? You mean the backyard? But she knew it wasn't the backyard. She had never seen Charlie look afraid like this. She drew a deep breath and could smell no smoke or burning. Sally, honey, don't ask questions. We have to get away. Far away. You just go get baby Levon and get her dressed. But should I? Is there time to pack? This seemed to stop him to derail him somehow. She thought she was as as afraid as she could be, but apparently she wasn't. She recognised that what she had taken for fright on his part was closer to raw panic. He ran a distracted hand through his hair and replied, I I don't know, I'll have to test the wind. And he left her with this bizarre statement, which meant nothing to her. Left her standing cold and afraid and disorientated in her bare feet and baby doll nighty. It was as if he had gone mad. What did testing the wind have to do with whether or not she had time to pack? And where was far away? Reno? Vegas? Salt Lake City? And... She put her hand against her throat as a new idea struck her. AWOL. Leaving in the middle of the night meant Charlie was planning to go AWOL. She went into the small room which served as baby Levon's nursery and stood for a moment, indecisive, looking at the sleeping infant in her pink blanket suit. She held to the faint hope that this might be no more than an extraordinarily vivid dream. It would pass. She would wake up at seven in the morning, just like usual, feed baby Levon and herself while she watched the first hour of the Today Show, and be cooking Charlie's eggs when he came off shift at 8am, his nightly tour in the reservation's north tower over for another night. And in two weeks he would be back on days and not so cranky, And if he was sleeping with her at night, she wouldn't have crazy dreams like this one and... Hurry it up, he hissed at her, breaking her faint hope. We got just time to throw a few things together. But for Christ's sake, woman, if you love her, he pointed at the crib, you get her dressed. He coughed nervously into his hand and began to yank things out of their bureau drawers and pile them helter-skelter into a couple of old suitcases. She woke up baby Levon, soothing the little one as best she could. The three-year-old was cranky and bewildered at being awakened in the middle of the night and she began to cry as Sally got her into underpants, a blouse and a romper. The sound of the child's crying made her more afraid than ever. She associated it with the other times Levon, usually the most angelic of babies, had cried in the night. Diaper rash, teething, croup, colic. Fear slowly changed to anger as she saw Charlie almost run past the door with a double handful of her own underwear. Brass straps trailed out behind him like the streamers from New Year's Eve noisemakers. He flung them into one of the suitcases and slammed it shut. The hem of her best slip hung out, and she just bet it was torn. What is it? she cried, and the distraught tone of her voice caused baby Levon to burst into fresh tears just as she was winding down to sniffles. Have you gone crazy? They'll send soldiers after us, Charlie. Soldiers! 
Not tonight they won't, he said. And there was something so sure in his voice that it was horrible. Point is, sugar babe, if we don't get our asses in gear, we ain't never going to make it off in the base. I don't even know how in hell I got out of the tower. Malfunction somewhere, I guess. Why not? Everything else sure God-fired malfunctioned. And he uttered a high, loon-like laugh that frightened her more than anything else had done. The baby dressed? Good. Put some of her clothes in that other suitcase. Use the blue tote bag in the closet for the rest. Then we're going to get the hell out. I think we're all right. Wind's blowing east to west. Thank God for that. He coughed into his hand again.